فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My beloved brothers and sisters you're all aware of the timing which we're in we're in the month of December and this month December a group of people uh, have taken it a celebration on the 25th they celebrate what they refer to as, as Christmas. So inshallah ta'ala in this khutbah, my aim and objective is inshallah ta'ala is to discuss are we as Muslims allowed and is it permitted for us to join in with them and celebrate this celebration of theirs? And is Christmas something that is permitted even in their legislation and in their religion? Or is it something from those things with which they have introduced into their religion. As you all are aware of, our scholars, qarnam ba'da qarnim, generation after generation, they spoke about what the Prophet would do through the year. Al Imam al Nasa'i rahimahullah he authored a book which he called it Amalul Yawmi wal Layla. Ibn Sunni, Hafid ibn Hajar, Jalaluddin al Suyuti, all of them, they authored books which they referred to as. And what they spoke about in this book is that which the Prophet would do through the whole year. Also Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali authored a kitab which he called it Lata'if al-Ma'arif. All of these scholars were speaking about what would the Prophet do through the year. Every single day what would he do. If a particular month had a superiority over the other months and if the Prophet would give it extra importance, they would state it in that book. We don't find it in those books, the Prophet giving any importance to this month, December, or doing something, alayhi salatu wassalam. And it's sad, we're, really, we're living at a time where we're seeing Muslims who are joining in and celebrating Christmas with the non-believers. I recently came to a family Muslim house and I saw a Christmas tree in their house. I saw a Christmas tree in their house. They're preparing for Christmas and they are Muslims. So this topic is not something that doesn't exist. It's a reality. Al-Imam Abu Dawood, and nasai and Ahmed, they all narrated in Hadith Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that Anas said, Qadima Rasulullah, the Prophet came. He came to Medina. Walahum yawmani and they had two days yal'abuna fihima in which they were enjoying themselves and they would play the prophet came and these two days meant something to them faqala the prophet said to them ma hadhan al-yawmani what are these two days what are the significance of these two days and the etiquette that we learn from the prophet here is he would always ask first he would want to know why they did what they did what was the reason behind it and so they told him qalu they said kunna nal'abu fihima fil jahiliya before islam these were days which we would celebrate, we would enjoy ourselves, we would play. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The Prophet said to them, إِنَّ اللَّهَ Verily Allah, قَدْ أَبْدَلَكُمْ He has exchanged it for you. He has taken that away and he has brought about for you. 
bihima khayran minhuma. Allah has brought about for you two days, I mean, two celebrations that are better than what you are celebrating. Yawmul Adha and Yawmul Fitr. These are two celebrations. Now let's ponder on what the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam. He said Allah has exchanged it. And the word in which the Prophet used, which is that Allah has exchanged it, means the previous celebration that you were celebrating is no longer going to exist. It's going to go. And the only thing that's going to take its place is what Islam has brought about. This hadith is sufficient to tell us and to make us understand that we have no other celebrations except that which the, the nusus, the kitab and the sunnah permitted for us. The evidences that prohibit us Muslims celebrating Christmas is in two types. Adilla which are amma, general evidences that prohibit us from Mushabahat al Kufari imitating and mimicking the disbelievers. And the second evidences is Adilla which are khas, specific evidences that prohibit us from min al Musharakati fi ayadihim to participate with them in their celebrations. And inshallah ta'ala. We will tackle it with those two sides, bi'idhnillahi al-kareem. Let's start with the general evidences that prohibit us from imitating the disbelievers and trying to be like them. Every one of us, in every single prayer that we pray, five times a day, we pray and we recite a particular surah in every rak'ah. We say to Allah, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ mustaqim." O oh Allah, guide us. On the straight path. This straight path is a path that two groups of people have not treaded on. إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ Maghdubi alayhim are the Jews. And the Dalin are the Christians. As the Prophet did the tafsir of this. عليه الصلاة والسلام These two people... O oh Allah, guide us on a path other than their path, a guided path, a straight path. So this ayah teaches us that the guided path, the straight path, is a path other than the path of the Christians and the Jews. And that is a dua that each and every one of us makes in every single rak'ah in which we pray. The Christians, they acted with no knowledge. And the Jews had the knowledge and did not implement what they knew. But the an'amta alayhim, the ones you have blessed, the righteous people, they've combined between beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. So we ask Allah in every rak'ah not to allow us, um, to make us from those who tread on the path of the disbelievers. The second ayah, Allah says in the Qur'an, ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاكَ عَلَى شَرِيعَةٍ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ فَاتَّبِعَهَا Allah says to the Prophet, Thumma and after that Muhammad, after what we have mentioned, we have placed you upon, ala sharia. we have placed you upon a legislation, we have given you commands and prohibitions, we have given you a religion, فتبعها, follow that religion we've given you. Wala and do not follow the path of who? Wala don't follow the path of those who have followed their whims and desires. And then after that Allah says, and they don't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us here that there's a path which is sharia, revelation, and there's a path which is desires. If they don't follow you Muhammad, and they don't follow the revelation, they are following what? They are following their whims and desires. Then this is the two paths. It's either you're upon the sharia or you're upon your whims and desires. And that is the path that the Christians and the Jews have taken. So we're, com we're commanded, just like the Prophet's commanded. The khitab here, the addressing that's taking place in this ayah, is going for the Prophet and us first of all. إِيَّاكَ أَعْنِي وَاسْمَعْ jara. We're talking to you all. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is one who's going to follow that path and he's going to follow that legislation without a doubt. But it's us that the addressing is firstly coming to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to us in another ayah, 
What do they wish, the disbelievers? What do لو تكفرون كما كفروا? They wish that you become disbelievers like they have become disbelievers. فتكونون سواء. So you can all be the same. فلا تتخذوا منهم and do not take from them Allah is saying to the Prophet and us believers only our allies, close allies, don't take them. When you celebrate their, their celebrations what happens is you might imitate them from the outer but then what's going to happen is going to creep into your heart. It's going to creep in your heart and then what's going to happen is love is going to come to you for them. And then you're going to go to, to their path and it may even lead for you to what? Apostate from the religion. And that's what they want. وَلِذَلِكَ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ بِنُ تَيْمَةِ In his great book, اِقْتِضَاءُ سِرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ لِمُخَالَفَةِ أَصْحَابِ الْجَعِيمِ He says that مُضَاهَرَةِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ أَمَا تَشَبُّوا بِالْكُفَّارِ Imitating the kuffar from the outer would lead in imitating them from the heart. It doesn't happen that you just look like them and you dress like them. But then it won't enter your heart. It does and it goes towards your heart to, to them. The fourth evidence, which are general. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith Bukhari and Muslim both narrating, in hadith Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, that the Prophet said, That you will follow and you will follow the path of those who came before you. Shibran bi shibrin wa bi حَتَّى لَوْ دَخَلُوا جُحْرَ ضَبِّ اللَّهِ دَخَلْتُمُوهُ That the Prophet said, you will follow them hand span, arm span, you will follow them. Even if they go into a lizard's hole, you will go into it. The Sahabas, they said, Ya Rasulullah, Al-Yahud wa Al-Nasara, are you talking about the Christians and Jews that we're going to follow like that? The Prophet said, Faman, who else? Who else? And if you look at that hadith today, you will realize, Nisdaqu qawlihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how true it is. It manifested in front of us. That the Muslims, everything they do is what they do. They drink like them. They drink with their left. The man who Allah commanded to let his beard grow, he wants to shorten his beard. He wants to cut it, get rid of it, and keep his thick mustache. Where did this come to him from? It came to him from the non-believers. The Prophet also said, alayhi salatu wasalam, man tashabbaha biqawmin, anyone who imitates a group of people, he tries to be like them, fahuwa min hum, he is from them. Abdullah ibn Umar narrated that and it's found in Sunnah Abi Dawood and Ahmad in his Musnad. Anyone who imitates a group of people, tries to be like them, dress like them, talk like them, act like them, carry yourself like them, then you're verily from them. Today, if a person prays like the Christians and the Jews, he's following them in what? In something that's their act of obedience or an act of worship for them. You wouldn't follow them. You would face the Qibla. That's where you pray towards. You will pray in, way, in the way that the Prophet prayed. Then why would you celebrate a celebration of theirs? It's still it's both the same. They're both ibadah. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين. له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد. Now I'm going to move on to the evidences which are specifically prohibiting us from celebrating their celebrations. Allah سبحانه وتعالى he described عباد الرحمن the righteous slaves of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the characteristics that he gave them was what? وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ They do not participate, nor do they witness vanity and falsehood. This is the characteristics of Ibadul Rahman. That they don't participate in falsehood. Ata, Mujahid, Dahak, Abdullah ibn Abbas, all of them they said, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ Zura here means a'yadihim, their celebrations. The falsehood. That they don't participate, that they do not witness, is their celebration. It's a characteristics from the characteristics of Ibadul Rahman, that they do not participate in their celebration. And from that, what will enter is giving them greetings by saying to them, Merry Christmas. You don't say that to them, it is not permissible for you. Even if they say it to you when it's Eid, they say Eid Mubarak, you're not allowed to say it to them. 
because your celebration is haq and their celebration is batil. And if somebody gives you glad tidings and greetings to you upon the haq, you don't give them greetings upon batil and that which is falsehood. And Allah referred to it in this ayah as what? Zur. Falsehood. Vanity. Even they, the Christians, amongst themselves, some of their scholars have actually admitted that Christmas is nothing to do with their religion. It was something that the Romans, when they claimed Christianity, they brought it with them. And they claimed that Jesus, or Isa ibn Maryam, this is when he was born, and so we're celebrating it because of that. And if you look at the Quran, and you look at the birth of Isa ibn Maryam, you realize that he wasn't born that time. Look at what Allah said. فَأَجَاءَهَا الْمَخَاضُ إِلَىٰ جِذْعِ النَّخْلَةِ قَالَتْ يَا لَيْتَنِي مِتُّ قَبْلَ هَذَا وَكُنْتُ نَسْيًا مَنْسِيًّا فَنَادَاهَا مِنْ تَحْتِهَا أَلَّا تَحْزَنِي قَدْ جَعَلَ رَبُّكِ تَحْتَكِ سَرِيًّا Allah tells us وَهُزِّي إِلَيْكِ بِجِذْعِ النَّخْلَةِ تُسَاقِطْ عَلَيْكِ رُطْبًا جَنِيًّا Allah tells us that Maryam, when she was giving birth, she was under a tree. And Christmas is at a cold season, it's winter. Isa ibn Maryam is under a tree. The weather doesn't show that it's cold. It shows that it's hot. Not to mention that the ayah, the siyaq of the ayah mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say to her? فَنَادَاهَا مِنْ تَحْتِهَا أَلَّا تَحْزَنِي قَدْ جَعَلَ رَبُّكِ تَحْتَكِ سَرِيَا مَا مَعْنَى السَّرِي? Sari is a water which is cold. A river ran under her. Allah said it's a cold water to drink. A cold water is not drunk in winter. It's summer that is drank. So from the Quran you sense that it is not that time Isa ibn Maryam was born. And from amongst themselves, the Christians, they themselves have admitted that this is something that was brought to them by the Romans. And then it is as Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورِ The believers don't participate in it. And if you look at Maryam, when Jibreel came to her, what did she say to him? قَالَتْ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِالرَّحْمَنِ مِنْكَ إِنْ كُنْتَ تَقِيَّا Maryam was a woman who was pious and chaste. Look at their celebration of Christian when they celebrate. The woman is not wearing her clothing properly. She is drinking alcohol. In more than 40 places in the Bible, it prohibits alcohol and the drinking of alcohol. And on that day, they're celebrating by drinking the alcohol. In an in their own religion, this is wrong. The men and women are free mixing. And that's something that goes against their own religion. Maryam, when Jibreel, Jibreel came, to tell her about the news of her child, what did she say? قَالَتْ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِالرَّحْمَنِ مِنْكَ I seek refuge in Allah from you. إِنْ كُنْتَ تَقِيَ If you're a pious person who has taqwa, get away from me and don't come close to me. And then what we need to realize is this is zur. It's made even in their religion. So one should not give them glad tidings. وَلِذَلِكَ The Prophet ﷺ, he said to Abu Bakr, he said, Inna li kulli qawm. Every people, they have Eidan, a celebration. Wahada Eiduna, and this is our celebration. And Allah said in the Quran, Wali kulli ummah. Every nation, Ja'alna mansakan. Hum nasiku. Every nation, we have made a ceremony for them, a celebration for them, rituals in which they celebrate in. I finally conclude with the statement of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Ata ibn Yasarin from the kibar of the Tabi'een, he said that Umar said, Iyakum, stay away from waratanatil a'adim, speaking the language of the disbelievers. Wa an tadqu ala al mushrikina, and that you enter upon the disbelievers. Yawma idihim, the day where they are celebrating, to enter onto them, fi kana isihim, in their churches. And there are Muslim clerics from masajids who are planning to go to the disbelievers on that day and cut cakes with them. Allahumma ghfil lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma ghfil lana hazlana wa jiddana wa khata'ana wa amdana wa kullu thalika indala ya rabbal alameen. Allahumma la taj'ali dunya akbar hammina wa la mablaga ilmina wa la tusallit alina bidhunubina man la yakhafuka fina wa la yirhamuna. Rabbi aati nufusana taqwaaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaaha anta waliyuha wa mawlaaha ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأقم الصلاة